That's the one we call Ma. I got the nice one. Everybody in 1776 has a nickname. We got Mom, Pa, Indiana Bob, DC Joe, Kentucky, Papa Kentucky, Raptor. <laughs> You don't get to pick your pick nick your, your can't I don't speak professionally, so bear with me. Uh, you don't get to pick your nickname. That's why I got hung with Santa. <laughs> but I'm embracing it fully. I keep eating so I get fatter. That's why. Anyway, you guys ain't buying that lie. I just like food. We do not need Another rah, rah, rah rally. If all we do today is get excited, but we don't know what to do tomorrow, then what's today worth? This is my country. I was born a free man. I'm going to die a free man. There ain't enough devils in hell. What I affectionately call DC. It's gonna take away my freedom. That's all right. I got a son, a daughter, a daughter-in-law, and two grandbabies. They will not live like we're living right now. Enough is enough. <laughs> we don't have to come up with new slogans, all we gotta go. Do us go back and read those that came out of 1776. Give me liberty. Forgive me, death. I will not live on my knees. And that means being taxed 50% of everything I make going to a government that does no longer represent me. If you think this, if this government represents you, there's something wrong with you. We live, in a, we live in a society that thinks it's okay to take away from hardworking men and women and give it to people that won't hit a lick at a snake. Enough is enough. We live in a society today that cannot tell you the difference between a man and a woman. And they're coming into our children's classrooms trying to push that nonsense down their throats. Enough is enough is enough it's not hard to identify the problem that is easy to identify what is a problem is identify what the, the, the problem is we're not identifying the solution i am looking right now at the solution we the people they think they're in charge but without us what do they have we are America. They are just the representatives. That's it. They do not own us. They do not control us. <laughs> they think they do. That is part of the problem, is it not? DC, I'm sorry, the federal government was never supposed to be this big. It was never supposed to be this powerful. Our founding fathers set up a constitutional republic and we have let it slip over the past 100 years into what is now they're referring to as a democracy. There is a democratic component, I will not deny that, in a republic because we hold elections. That's it. The problem with a democracy and the difference between a democracy and a republic is a purely phys uh, uh, The word is escaping me. Pardon me. I get excited and forget what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> Philosophical problem. Philosophical difference. A democracy focuses on equality. That sounds good. As a matter of fact, the Declaration of Independence says all men are created equal. But there's a reason why they wrote the word before equal, created. We're all created equal. But the moment you're born will never be equal again. God has given us all different ambitions, different missions in life, 
different abilities, different talents, different skills. But a democracy focuses on equality. A democracy tries to lump groups of people together and say these people must be equal with these people over here. You cannot legislate equality. But a republic focuses on individual liberties. That is the philosophical difference. You cannot, also you cannot legislate independent individual liberty. You know why? Because God gave that to us. Okay. It's already been legislated in heaven and Amen. there's no man on earth that can take that away from us. Right. As a matter of fact, the sole purpose of government is to protect your individual liberty. And this government is trying to take your individual liberty. How long are you going to let this go by? That, that, that choice is totally up to you. I, I have chosen for myself. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my family, we will stand on these principles of freedom that our founding fathers gave us in our founding documents. Somebody asked me the other day and said, what specific individual liberty have they taken from you? I said, not one. But they're talking about taking all of them, and that's enough for me. I don't even want you talking about it. Am I going to wait until you take it and then start doing something about it? They're telling us what they're going to do. They're going to try to take your freedom of speech. They're going to try to take your, your Second Amendment. They're going to try to take away the right to peacefully assemble. They're going to right, try to take away the freedom of the press. They're trying to take all of these things away right now while we sit on this parking lot. And our medical freedom. I forgot something. I just looked over and seen you, brother. Give me that pastor's name again. Pastor Mike? No, 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 the pastor here. Pastor Larry Duncan, where are you? I just looked over and seen him, and I get excited and forget what I'm supposed to do. Start doing what I want to do. Pastor Larry Duncan, thank you. This is his church. Thank you. He's the pastor of this church. He has faced great opposition having this here. And I'm thankful. And I'm just going to tell you something to the federal government. Don't tread on Indiana. I'm telling you, this group here is dead serious about freedom. I love you. I just met them this week. I love these guys and gals. They're amazing. The devil tried to split us up, but greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. This is a God thing. The problem. Go back to the problem. Did I do that right? Is that okay? Is that all you need me to do? All right. Thank you, guys. Now let's get back into this. The problem is that we have not exercised our rights to come against this government when they start to do things that are wrong. We've let them go, let them go, let them go until now we're in a mess. And my mama always told me, this is your mess, you made it, you clean it up. It was totally unfair for us to let President Trump take on the whole responsibility of draining the swamp. He did not create that problem. The American public did. He cannot fix that problem. The American public has to. What we have to do now is join forces together. No violence. No violent rhetoric. Let me tell you something. We cannot out-violence the federal government. But we have proven 34 days straight we can't out-peace them. They had no idea what to do with us. The threats they made at us, we smiled and said, okay. And we kept on protesting and we kept on standing there. It was scalding hot in D.C. I've got people from, uh, we got 16 states right here, right now, on this parking lot. 16 different states represented here. There was more than that on the mall of D.C. Day after day, Antifa rode by one night on a bicycle with a big water bottle filled with water and smelling salts. I don't know if you've ever smelt that combination. Let me promise you, you don't want to smell that combination. They hosed down our vehicles, hit some of our people. One of the guy's cars, literally they demolished his car when they sprayed it inside of it. He went, somebody gave him another car. He came right back out and started the same protest yeah. after he got his new vehicle. I'm telling you, you cannot be afraid of anything. I sat next to a guy on a couch one time. 
when they were trying to talk me out of going into D.C. I'd, make, I'd give them my word, I'm going to D.C. I, I was going to D.C. if I was going by myself. I didn't care. Because I'm a man of my word and I'm going to do it. So I sit on that couch with him. And he said, a lot of people got upset at you because you said we're going to D.C. and we're going to do it right this time. I said, oh, wow, well, don't take much to upset some folks, does it? And he said, but I understood what you were saying. And he said, but they did. I said, so you understood what I was saying? He goes, yes, sir. I said, he had five trucks. I said, so how many trucks have you got going with us into D.C.? Oh, I can't do that. I got a wife. I got a kids. I got, I got a business. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Have you ever said I'm willing to give my life for my country? I yeah. am willing to give my life for my country. Amen. He said, don't you lie to me. Stand up. If you're not willing to give up everything you own, don't tell me you're willing to give up your life. Let me tell you something, folks. You may think you're sitting pretty, and I'm not talking. You guys are the choir. You're here now. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to those that may be watching us later. You are not willing to give up your life if you're not willing. To. You think you've got it going on right now, and you think everything's going to be okay. Do you really think this government that's in control right now and has been in control for a number of decades, do you think they're going to get weaker? you think they're going to honestly give up more power if you just sit there and do nothing? Let me tell you what they're going to do. They're going to get stronger, and they're going to get more powerful. They're going to get more forceful, and pretty soon you're going to have one of two choices. You're either going to bend your knee, or you're going to be in a gulag somewhere. And don't tell me you're not, because we also sit outside that D.C. gulag every night with our, our January 6th political prisoners in that prison just a few feet away from us, flipping their lights, telling us, thank you for being out there fighting for us. Yeah. You are yeah. not exempt from that possibility nope. but don't be afraid don't be afraid I've been reading a lot of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s speeches lately and over and over and over and over he reiterated don't be afraid what do you think January 6th was about it was about trying to instill fear and keep us from doing what they know we have to do we have to stand up we have to stand up peacefully. Stand up. Again, they don't know how to handle that. And we must stand up now. The second problem we have is a spiritual problem. Our founding fathers told us we could not. Unprofessional, but totally necessary. Our founding fathers told us we could not maintain a constitutional republic if we did not maintain a moral society. Morals in America has degraded to a level that I have never seen in my life, or have I read about in American history. As a matter of fact, some of our, uh, some of the people that were alive when they presented the founding documents, they were afraid that they weren't moral enough at that time to maintain. A constitutional republic. Where are we today? The reason that the reason they are, are tearing our morals down is because they know if they tear our morals down, our constitutional republic will soon follow. We used to be a godly nation. Even those who did not believe in God, who did not serve God, still respected God. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Benjamin Franklin never professed to be a Christian. But one time when they were arguing in the constitutional Congress, they were arguing back and forth, bickering back and forth. He is the one that stood up and said, I know what the problem is. We have not invoked the Almighty God. They got down and prayed right then, and they didn't just pray this little quick prayer. They prayed until they prayed through and got back up, and things went much more smoothly after that. A man that was not a Christian, never claimed to be a Christian, but he knew the power of prayer. We have to return to a moral society. We're calling on our churches to stand up and say, we have to invoke the name of God again. We have to have our pastors stand up ramrod straight and declare, thus saith the Lord, and preach to their people how to live as a moral people. Why? Because a constitutional republic is about self-governance. You got to govern yourself or somebody will govern you. Every time we let our morals slip, they create another law to keep us in check. Our morals slip, another law is created to keep us in check. 
until pretty soon, with every law that's created, more freedom you are losing. We are now, explain this to you. This is a pocket constitution, 46 pages. The Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and some commentary, 46 pages. Nancy Pelosi's HR1, which will try to federalize all of our elections, over 790 pages. Anybody see the problem with that? This is what governs the entire federal government. 64 pages. Yes, sir. 790 plus. Anybody seeing the problem here? They are writing more law to control you, and we're not enforcing the law that controls them. Enough is enough. Americans have to stand up, stand proud, stand peaceful, and stand what's, for what's right. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I heal, hear from heaven and heal their land. If we humble ourselves, number one, and we pray, and then I just got a revelation on this this week, Pastor Tony sitting back there was with me when I got it, and seek my face. I've got a little grandson, he's about two and a half years old. Me and his daddy sometimes get in conversations and my little grandson's going, Papa, Papa, Papa. And I'm in a conversation with his dad. We're all we're engrossed in that. My grandson wants my attention. I'm looking the wrong way. He is seeking my face. If I don't turn my face to him, he climbs up in my lap, grabs me by the side of my head and pulls me into his direct. That's what we need to do with God right now. Climb up in his lap, grab him by the face and say, God, we need you now. We cannot do this on our own. And if you don't come and help us, we are lost. We have to do this now. This is how we become a great nation once again. That's what started us as a great nation. That's what will bring us back to a great nation. We need God. Stand up, America. Stand up by getting on your knees. Stand up in the lap of God and say, I will not let you look away anymore. I need you too much. I need you now. I just got to say one thing real quick. Uh, I forgot to say it in my speech uh, a little while ago. Indiana Fighting for Freedom supports 1776 Restoration Movement. We back them 100%. I can't remember the... Thank you! We still are 200%! Thank you! Freedom! Freedom!